we have the law of Natilat Yadayim. Before we eat food, meaning bread, we need to wash our hands. Today we're going to talk in details what's involved with Hilchot Natilat Yadayim. Also, in Agadeta part, meaning the part we're going to speak in the rabbinic writing, we're going to talk about the trait of arrogance, ga'ava. But the first part, the first part is back to the subject of uh, this tractate, which is the sota, the matter between him and her, or her and him, um, involved with two entities we explained in the past several days. One is called Kinui, and one is called Stira. Kinui meaning the act of warning. Stira meaning seclusion. My teacher, the late Rav Shlomo Zalman Orbach, was asked about people from one of those small settlements in Samaria. Um, they um, living in a z in an area that is heavily populated with a uh, hostile um, Arab neighbors, and basically because they are small group of uh, settlers, they uh, the families are taking turns in transportation between the settlement to Tel Aviv, Yerushalayim, etc. So their question was: since there is one person who taking the others. Sometimes, especially now, the winter time, it may be issue of Yehud, meaning you have a married woman with another man in the car at night, alone. In one hand, um, it's very unlikely, Rav Shlomo Zalman said in his responsa, that they stopped the car um, in such a dangerous um, road. On the other hand, the subject of Yehud is based on our daf today. We're going to study page 4, but we will start on page 3b, two lines from the bottom of the page. Tanur Abanan, the rabbis teach us, Ezohi Eidut HaRishona. What is they considering the first testimony, meaning the first testimony that prohibited her to stay in marriage with her husband, zo edut stira, meaning if there is a testimony that um, proof in the testimony a state of seclusion between her and another man. Edut acharona, what is the final testimony? Zo edut tum'a, this is the defilement during seclusion testimony. Page uh, 4, Vechama Shi'u Stira. This is a very fascinating um, point. Um, Tosfot explained to us the rabbis want to have a general framework of um, time for cohabitations. Soon you see that there's different category in a sense of uh, the relations, but we establishing in our simple language a logical legal system that bring a framework of um, sort of litigation. So in order to come up with the idea that it was a suspicion or it was a proof of relation, we need to know how long is the duration of the seclusion. How long must the woman be secluded to be rendered a sota? So um, the Noda Yuda in Eben Ezer Kuf Samech 160 um, ask how far you go with a witnesses for the seclusion. Um, do you need all this time that we're going to discuss or not? But anyway, the answer is Kedei Tum'a. The time for defilement to occur. And what is it? Kedei bia. It's a time for cohabitation. And what is that? Kedei ha'ara'a, which is the beginning of the relation. Um, the Gemara in Yevamot 55b explained that that's basically the attachment. 
Um, and the bottom line is, they said, K'day hakafat dekel, divrei Rabbi Ishmael. The time that you circle around a average palm tree, that's the time Rabbi Ishmael hoard. Um, it is a discussion among the rabbis, what size of palm tree, etc. But in general, we go the middle size. Now we're going to hear other measurement of time. Later we understand why we need that. But let's first read just the measurement itself. Rabbi Yezomer Kedem Mezigat Akos, mixing a cup, that's the time. Meaning you take water, in those days you need to dilute it with the wine, so that's the time. Rabbi Shomer Kedem Ishtoto, the time that you drink it. Ben Azar Kedem Yitzot Beitza, the time that you roasted an egg. Rabbi Akiva Omer Kedem Legom'a, to swallow the egg. Rabbi Yehuda ben Beit Teira Omer Kedem Legom'a Shalosh Beitzim Zo Achar Zo. He said the time to take to swallow three eggs um, successively. Then Rabbi Lazar ben Yirmiya Omer Kedem Legshor Gardi Nima. He said that the time to take to weave um, to the um, a, a string. Chanin ben Pinchas Omer Kedesh Toshit Yada Letoch Pia Letoch Keisam that the time takes a woman to extend her hand into her mouth and remove a splinter that was stuck between her teeth. Plimo Omer Kedesh Toshit Yada Lasal Litol Kikar Lechem He said the time to take a woman to extend her hand into a basket and remove a loaf of bread. Even there is no a Torah clear proof to this matter. This is the verse in the book of Proverbs chapter 6 and that's the indirect source. So the whole Hanei Lamali, the big question is why you need all these measures? You need them. It's a time to take to her defilement and also her um, seduction. So therefore the time, they explain to us that this is the time of cohabitation. The Rashi said even usually it's a, if it's not an act of rape, so it takes time to convince, to seduce her, but the assumption is that it was already happened earlier. The, the Feinstein in Evan Hazer, Igrot Moshe, um, uh, Helek Dalet, 68, he elaborates and he said that the assumption is um, uh, time, he talked about the uh, elevator, etc. Ve'itana kedei biya, ha'va'amina kedei gmar biya, kamashman kedei ha'ara'a, which is, as we said, the, the beginning of the cohabitation. Ve'i ashmi'inan k'day ha'ara'a ha'va'amina k'day ha'ara'a ve'artsuta So you may think the beginning of cohabitation also her seduction. Kamashmalan k'day tum'a So the grandson of the Chilkat Yaakov, he wrote a, a book called Mishmane Ha'aretz in Hebrew. And he asked a question for the definition of Ha'ara'a. What exactly? So he, after a discussion he said that he was in a relation, beginning act, and he wants to continue and other bothers him, disturb him. So that's enough to call her in a matter of Sota. Um, the Rambam said that it's also um, in a sense, um, Rambam bring example, let's say he warned her for 10 strangers, 10 men, and she have the Yichud, so that's also in the category of Sota, but the Minchat Chinuch have a discussion over this Rambam, if that's applied to each and every one of the 10th or all together. What's the measurement? Kedei HaKafat Dekel, as we say, circling a time, um, a, a, a palm tree, that's the measurement of time. Diane Weiss, the Minchat Yitzchak, asked a question about Shi'ura de Yichud. Um, because uh, we have the time of the Chupa, and after the Chupa, 
you have the Cheder Yichud, so the Edim goes there, make sure it's fine, and then they're waiting. Was, so they have the Chumrot of Velvale of Brisk, that goes further, but basically you talk about five, some said six, some said nine minutes, it's a different Minhagim. But the big question he asks, if Edei Yichud is the Kishur Tuma or not, based on this Gemara. Anyway, Veramini, Veni Stera, Vechama Shur Stera, Stera lo Shamanu. כשהוא אומר וינית מאה, והוא אומר כדי טומאה, כדי ביאה, כדי הרעה, כדי חזרת דקל, דברי רבי אליעזר. There are other opinions. רבי יהושע אומר כדי מזיגת הכוס, the time to take to mix a cup, as we said earlier. בן עזאי אומר כדי לשתותו, time to drink it. רבי עקיבא אומר כדי לצלות בעיסה, to, to roast an egg. רבי יהודה בן ביתר אומר כדי לגום ה... time it takes to swallow an egg. כעס על כדת אין היינו הקפת דקל, היינו חזרת הדקל. We assume that circling a palm tree and the returning of a palm tree are the same measure of time. And we are therefore faced with the following problem. הטעם אמר רבי ישמעאל כדי הקפת דקל, ופליק רבי אליעזר עלי. אך אמר רבי אליעזר כדי חזרת דקל. אומר אביי, ואי אקספליין. הקפה ברגל. It's a circling a palm tree referred to walking around the tree on foot. חזרה ברוח. Returning is a wind. So you have two, total two different measures of time. Anyway, you see that the, what the Brita, the Blazer said in the second Brita, it's not matching to Rabbi Ishmael in the first one. By Ravashi, חזרה ברוח. Returning by the wind. כאיכא דאזיל ואתא רדי, או דילמא כאיכא דאזיל ואתא ואדר קאי בדוכתא. What exactly the time that um, is going around? Because when the wind take the palm tree to one, uh, um, so they come back, back and forth. You see it a lot in Florida. Um, I always was amazed when I taught in um, um, FAU, Florida Atlantic University, So I used to stop in uh, Fort Lauderdale. So there's a lot of palm trees between the, the airport and the, and the university. So you see at the time of the strong winds how those big palm trees running from one side to another. Anyway, So the Gemara said, take it. It's ten, they, they don't solve it. So in general we shall know that Rabbi Yashiv the late Rav Vojner and many others have a discussion over the issue of Baal Abair. In general, we explained earlier in the previous daf that Baal Abair meaning you have the assumption that the husband is in a city, so he's taking care of that. But he says the reality is when you have an employee in the house and, um, uh, and the, you know, he's in the house and the husband goes to work, how far you go with the heter of Baal Abair. It's not so simple. Ha'atam, it's a serious question by Alakha. Ha'atam, Amar Rabbi Eliezer, Kedai Mezigat Askos. Ha'acha Kedai Chazarat Adekel. So again, takes time for mixing a cup. Here the second Brayta speaks about time to take to returning of a palm tree. So the Gemara said, Idi ve'idi chadshu ahu. Both of them, it's the same measure of time. Meaning both, כדי חזרת הכוס, כדי חזרת דקל. האת אמר, מה רבי יהושע כדי לשתותו, אך אמר כדי מזיגת הכוס. So he said, אימה למזוג, כדי למזוג, ולשתות. So it's like Cain, what Rabbi Yezo said. You have to do the muzeg, you will take time to mixing the cup, and then to drink it. That's the way um, uh, we understand that the reason Rabbi Yoshua come to Ed on Rabbi Yezer, he said that that cause, or Torah cause, um, in addition to the time of Meziga, you may say that both have the same measure of time. In Ken, Ein Rabbi Yezer. So that's the case. He is Rabbi Yezer, Kedem Meziga the cause. And we said that it is a disputation. The same story. To roast the egg and the same. Same shiur, same measure. 
הלט אמר רבי עקיבא כדי לגומח, אמר כדי לצלות ביצה, אמר כדי לצלות ביצה ולגומה, meaning both, שניהם, לצלות, לשתות, to roast, to drink. ולמה אי דבי חיר אחד שיעור ההוא? לצלות ביצה, לגמוע, it's one, אם כן, היינו בן הזי, the same story, same methodology, the same logic. הלט אמר רבי יהודה בן ויתר כדי לגמוח שלוש ביצים זו אחר זו, over there, רבי יהודה בן ויתר said it, take to swallow three eggs successfully. הכה אומר, here in the second bright eye, he said that the measure is כדי לגומה, to swallow a single leg, לברב דרבי עקיבא קמא, דקאמר, משערים בצליעה ובגניעה, which means that we recon the duration of the seclusion in term of time required for the roasting and swallowing of a single egg. האם השיעור גמיעה לחודה כדי לגמוע שלוש בצים בזו אחר זו, דהיינו צליעה וגמיעה. So, רבי יהודה בן מתירה said in opposition to רבי עקיבא, that he thought that you need one act of גמיעה. That's enough, that you have two entities, you have צליעה, you have roasting and you have גמיעה. So that's the three eggs, one after the other. But רבי יהודה בן מתירה doesn't agree with that, and he hold that it's enough to have one egg. The truth is that Minchat Yitzchak, the late Diane Weiss, in his response are dealing with the new technology. We have now go to Manhattan, for example. We don't need to go to Abu Dhabi. You see it there. You see a building of hundreds of uh, floors. So usually you don't go straight with the, with the elevator from, one, from zero to, to 100. You take elevator usually to offices. You go from zero to 10. And then you have direct elevator, have direct elevator, you switch elevators. So people ask him in Chatitzchak how you treated this new technology with the issue of Yehud. How, how long? You tell me that the time frame is for like five minutes? Or because the elevators is, have potential to be open constantly? So it's not a question of Yehud. So he basically tried to be the advice, tried to be lenient, but he brought Maharil Diskin. Maril Diskin said that even in those years, in the Maril Diskin's much earlier years, that used to have a train in Europe. So it was a question of train, especially at night train, etc., with the issues of Yehud. It's a serious question. There is a book written by the stipler. I have the privilege to know him um, many, many times. I saw him, the Rav Kanievsky father, Kilot Yaakov. So it's a book that um, was uh, published by the brother-in-law of Reb Shlomo Zalman Oerbach, uh, the book called Dvar Halacha. And in the Agdama, in the introduction, the stipler brings something that's so... If you don't see it in the world by the stipler, it's kind of unbelievable. He brings a story about the daughter or the granddaughter, I don't remember, I think the daughter of the Chavad Da'at was a great rabbi by uh, the book he wrote. So her daughter, this is old days in Europe, she married um, her daughter. So she took her daughter on a train to buy in those villages they can get all the wedding needs. So she traveled by um, um, with a guy um, uh, in those years they have the old, old, old um, time train so it was a non-Jewish guy that traveled with her and her daughter, supposed to be the, the driver, in between, etc., etc. And all of a sudden, when they are in between, with most probably it's a horse and wagon or whatever it is, it turned that he realized that there is a man involved, and he tried just to get rid of them. Tried to uh, put them in uh, one of those unknown locations, tighten their hands and try to kill them. And all of a sudden, from nowhere, is a um, very important minister or something like that came with the with the, like in the evening time with the horse and wagon and he stopped by and the guy realized that uh, he is about to get caught so he left them and he caught him and he uh, handed him to the police or something like that I'm about I'm not quoting word by word it's just the main idea so the stipler said that Okay, um, the father, the Chavad Dat, appeared to his daughter in a dream. And he said he was already gone, was no longer among the living. 
And he said to his daughter, my sweet daughter, you shall know that you see today the minister that saved you, it was me. And he said, in Shamaim, in heaven, they didn't want to save you because they claimed that you violated biblical law of Yehud by being with this guy, etc., etc. But because I have the Zchut of Klal Israel, because I taught Torah in public, so I get a special exception to go and save you. And that's the stipler bot in his book Dvar Lachai, introduction, that in our days is a uh, very serious um, halachic problems with the issues of Yehud. It's not as say, as simple as it sounds, because, um, and I keep saying that when, uh, whenever this question come up, one should ask a permanent POSIC, um, because that can destroy family, community, and more. So a person should ask someone who's uh, really responsible for that. Anyway, Rabbi El Azar ben Yirmiya Omer, Kedei Shi Kshor Gardi Nima. It's a take to weave, weaver to the string, to a string. Bai Ravashi Dim Rachak or Dim Karav, which means that the two pieces of the string is distance or together, he left it, take or unanswer. Chanin ben Pinchas Omer Kedei Shtushit Yadal Toch Pia Leton Kesar. Bai Ravashi Dim Yadak or Lom Yadak Take or. פלימו אומר כדי שתושיט ידע לסל ליטול כיכר. בא רבה שדם ידק או לא מידק? The same age uh, that is uh, wedges on the basket or is not wedged. בחדתא או בעתיקה? Old or new basket? Uh, old is easier. בחמים או בכרגע? Warm loaf or with a cold loaf? So Rashi explained that uh, basically uh, you go to the store, you buy a croissant, or you buy, uh, uh, you know, bread. If it's soft, so it can fall out of your hands. Um, you hold it, um, um, you have to wait, you have to do it slowly when you pull it out. Uh, versus the other that is already cooled off and is stronger. 4B, bidechitei or bidesaarei, with a loaf of wheat bread or with a loaf of barley bread. Berakicha or beakusha. You talk about loaf that made of soft, of loose dough, or made of hard dough. Teiku. Or marabi Yitzchak barabi Yosef, or marabi Yochanan. Kol echad veechad be'atzmo shi'er. Ba'ika benazai delo nasiv. Uh, it's a big question, if he wasn't married or not. Uh, the Gemara in Yevomot 63 said that he loved the Torah, but some, there's a version that he married, and not for long. Anyway, I buy him and I see with Ferah Shava. So some said that he was a Chosen, he was a Aiden, son-in-law of Rabbi Akiva. It's all kind of version, what exactly happened. I buy him a Merabei Shmiel, he heard it from his teacher. I buy him a Sod Hashem Lireav. So the Shem Lirav, meaning that he knows in the Ruach HaKodesh, even there's some challenge that and said that this Loba Shamaimi, we don't pass in Olacha, Shtiam Kubetzet, who said, Nisim Gaon, that you don't do a pass in Olacha in Loba Shamaimi. Anyway, based on that, Rabbi Kiva Eger asked a question, how you treated a day stira, the Edim, the witnesses for the seclusion. He says, imagine a regular monetary case. You have Reuven, that claim you see Shimon, borrow one hundred dollars from Levi. You have Shimon that came and said it was a different date and he saw a um, different time. How you, um, can you combine Tziru Fediyot, can you combine a day stira, especially when it's Dinei Nefashot. Based on this sugya, we have a discussion. Darash Rav Avira Zimnin Namar Lishmei Midera Be'ami Vizim Namar Lishmei Midera Be'asi Kol Ha'ochel Lechem Lo Ntilat Da'im Kilo Ba'li Shazona Now we're dealing with the Ntilat Yada'im, the important. We said if someone washes hand, uh, um, um, eats bread without washing his hands is like he cohabited with the harlot. How come? So, so I mean that this is matching uh, punishment. It's a story I heard uh, about the Rebbe of Ostrovtsa. The story goes that he for 40 years fasts, I think Monday and Thursday. Anyway, so the, the Hasidim said, you can go to Pidyon Aben, and there's a few sources that say that if you eat in the Pidyon Aben, it's Ki'ilu Tzam, it's like you fast 84 
Taniot, the Tanya speak about 84 Taniot for certain Tikkunim. So the Ostrovtsa said, no, I, over there it's Keilu, I'm a real Chote, I'm a real sinner, so I cannot take the Keilu. Anyway, Omar Rava Hai Ba'ad Isha Zonat Kikar Lechem, Ba'ad Kikar Lechem, Ba'ad Isha Zonat Mibayle, Amar Rava Kola Ba'ad Isha Zonat, Lesov Mbakesh Kikar Lechem, God forbid. Says if someone ever cohabits with a harlos, will ultimately have to Chaz V'Shalom beg for a loaf of bread. That's a huge curse. Uh, as you know, the, 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 the Mishle and Arus said that um, the worst things is, uh, it's Ani um, Chashuv Kemet, a poor person sometimes is considering the Indian is like dead. So it's a basically big halachic question based on that is, if she claimed that he was uh, with prostitute or whatever it is, if based on that she can get the get, she come to best in. And based on that, if it's a if someone constantly eat without washing his hand, so he is like uprooted from the world. So there is a um, there is a story about Rabbi Kiva Iger. One of his sons became a Hasid. Kotsk, Ishbitza. So people was worried. What's happened to a label Iger? So Rabbi Kiva Iger said, look and see how he washes his hand. And then you know if he's still a man of God, fear of God, you watch Shemayim or not. And they noticed that he is doing it properly. So that was the sign. Omar Rav Chia Barashi, Omar Rav Chaim Rishunim Tzrich Shiyagbiya Adab Lemala. My father, my teacher, Rav Chaim Naftali Ben Rav Yaakov Yitzchak, I can attest, attest to that, that he was very, very makbid with Natila Tedaim to do it properly. We always quote the Ben Ishchai, I think it's Parashat Shmini Shana Rishona that speaks about all the different way of uh, three, uh, three and three and covering each hands each way and then to, uh, to the heaven of the ten spheres and lifted, lifted up and then the Suyodech and Kodesh, etc. It was very makpil in that. Anyway, this is a fascinating Ben Ishchai. One day we need to study it. It's Parashat Shmini Shana Rishona. I used to learn it many, many years ago with... Um, uh, biggest Rabbonim. I learned it once, if I'm not mistaken, was about 30 years ago with Rav, Rav Yaakov Chaim Sofer. This Alachot in Ben Ishchai. He's uh, one of the luminary rabbi. Um, it's beautiful, beautiful. Ben Ishchai, Shana Rishona, Parashat Shmini. Anyway, Mai Machronim, Tzrich Sheshpil Yadav Lemata. So, Beit Yosef said, not up, not down. But uh, he brought the idea of Chaz uh, V'Sholem Simu Yanaim. Blindness, so my machronim should put it down, should lower it, because the whole idea is the, to, to remove the zuamat, remove the, the uncleanness. So therefore, he put it down, but it, for sure, there's a lot of Kabbalah writing about it. Tanya Namayache, we learn also in the Brayta, Notel Yadav, Tzrich Sheyagbir Yadav Lemala. One who washes his hand, he needs to lift up his hand. Shema Yetzu Amayim Chutz Laperek. Maybe the water will go past the wrist joint. So they come back and then return and, and contaminated the hands. So this is a very serious um, discussion in Tractate Yadaim, chapter 2. So it has to be at least the two. As I said, there are shash of a different view the Ben Ishchai bought from the Kavanot Ari, that is three. But anyway, the key is at least two in each hand. And if it's out of the peric, outside of the wrist, is the issue. So, anyway, um, the story about the um, uh, Shinebe Rebbe, one of the greatest Hasidic Rebbe, they said that he used to take a towel and, and before he used the sefel, the, the one to wash hands, he used to make sure that it's totally dry. He take a towel and dry it out. Be, and he said, the Hasidim said, why? He says, people call me Arava Kodosh the Holy Rabbi, and I don't think I deserve it. So he said, at least I have a reason why I'm going extraordinary for something that deserve it. But I would like to share with you here a Rashi. I would like to elaborate just for one moment something from um, my book on Rashi, Bi'urea Klomar Berashi al Ashas. Um, Rashi here used the word Klomar twice. And in the explanation of the Mishnah in Tractate Yadaim, there is a disputation among the Rishonim. They have the Rambam, uh, that said that Ada Perek, they have the Bet Yosef. 
etc., etc. And I, from long, 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 long explanation, goes to explain why Rashi used the word Klomar here twice. Um, again, running out of time, but I highly recommend it if you have the chance. Um, just read it, it's beautiful. I brought here all the, the Rambam, the Bet Yosef, other Meforshim, other Rishonim, and for sure the Ben Ishchai and the Arizal, um, as I said, with the um, the meaning of Tidat Yadayim. Anyway, Amar Rabbi Yabao, Kol ha'ochel pat belo niguv yadayim kilu ochel lechem tameh. Someone who um, eat a bread without um, drying his hands, so it's like um, he is um, um, eating a contaminated bread. So for sure, contaminated bread is considering a lack of the cheretz. The Rashi explained that is davar mius. So there are several explanations. What does that mean? Lachmam tame, the contaminated bread. Um, some said it's gematria without niguv uh, yadaim. Uh, but in general, is a discussion among the post poskim if that's the beginning of the meal or the end of the meal. There is a Tosfot in Tractate Psachim, page seven B, um, that said mitzvot uh, overla siyatan. But here it's after the tila. Why it's after the tila? And the hefseg between that and namotzi, we do not have time. But it's uh, a lot of write up on this. Um, in the uh, code, in the parisha, etc. Umay ve'eshet ish nefshay akarat atzud. What does that mean when he said a married woman, the, uh, 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 a uh, precious soul, uh, in snares? Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Abba, Amar Rabbi Yochan, Kol Dam Shish Bogasut Aruch. Anyone who is arrogant, the end is lefasson nechshal ve'eshet ish. He can get forbid to have um, sin of cohabitation with a married woman, which is a direct violation of Torah laws. So the Tiferet Zion said that the same way as the humbleness is the place for the sanctity, the same as hauntiness is leading to violation in this area. A person that is uh, arrogant, um, he ends up uh, pursuing a married woman, etc. The story about Reb Shleimer of Zvil, they used to call him Yesod Sheba Yesod. Yesod is in Kabbalah, the, the, the essence of living. And you search by sword, it means that you reach very high level of Kedusha um, in this area. Amar Rava, hai nefesh kara, nefesh gvoa mi ba'alei, v'od hit tatsui din ba'alei. Amar Rava, kola ba'alei shatish, if someone have cohabitation with married woman, afilu lamad Torah, even have a huge schut of learning Torah, dekhtiv ba'al karai mi pninim. The Torah, we all know that it's like a pearls. <sighs> so... It's like more precious than the high priest who entered the, 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 the Holy of Holy Temple. Nevertheless, she will ensnare him into the judgment of the purgatory. So it's kind of an expression of the, um, how far a person go with the sin. Even he reached that level of spirituality. Someone who is a, uh, have a hauntiness of spirit is like worship idol. So in both places it's written in Mishlei and in the Vorim that God um, uh, haunting out is abomination in the eye of God. And here they said in the Vorim you should not bring a, a image of adultery to your home. So it's like idol worshippers. Rabbi Yochan did they amar kilu kafar ba'ikar? It's like he denied the fundamental tenet of the existence of God. Shemimar v'ram levavecha he became arrogant v'shachat et Hashem elokecha he forgot the Lord God. Rabbi Chama bar Chanina amar kilu ba'al kol arayot that he is like he only person is regarded as though he cohabited with all the forbidden relations. So you see how it's connected to each other. So that's basically continuation. That uh, someone who's haunty is leading to idol worshipping. It's all part um, um, of what the Gemara said in Sanhedrin 63. Anyway, Ula Amar Kilu Bana Bama. 
and he said he's like he constructed an, an altar. Shneimar said in Isaiah 2, Chidu lachem in Adam asher neshama ve'apo, stir up with these people who are arrogant, ki b'ma nechshavu al tikri b'me la b'ma. So leave a person who is arrogant. There's a famous story about the Arizal. When it was the last moment of his life, he died young. They said, he quote the Posuk, Al Tevueni Regal Gava, please God help me to avoid myself from hauntiness, from being arrogant. And it's also the story about the Baal Shem Tov, the founder of the Hasidic movement. Before, before he passed, he mainly talked about Gaive, about someone who's arrogant. He called it in such, so far that Ibud Tzelem Elohim, that the image of God that God gave us, person have a chance to lose it if he uh, um, goes. So Abchazkel Avramsky explained, each person has some level of gaiva, some level of hauntiness, and he needs to walk there and is a self-search that each individual have to find out which area he really have this manner of, of hauntiness. Um, we should know that the, the Tanya explained it, or Pinchas Mikoritz explained, many Hasidic rabbis explained that there is a two category, one is called gaiva and one is called hitparut. Hitparut is someone who's arrogant. Hitparut bedavar shei en lo, meaning you haunty, you arrogant over something you don't even have. Gaive gava is something that you have, and you feel proud of that. So Pinchas Mikoritz explained beautifully. The post we're going to read in a few weeks the story of Yaakov and Esav, Jacob and Esau. So they said about Esau, he was the Gavtan. He, I am the strong one, I am the warrior, I am the hunter. Yaakov Avinu, the Torah called him, Ishtam Yoshevo Alim. Said that he was humble, he studied Torah, he built a family, he had his wives, he had his children. The end of the story, Yaakov Avinu meet Esau, he have all this wealth, he have a family, he have everything. So now, the Gaive of Esau, he is man of arrogance. So the idea is that his gaive, his act of arrogance, is belong to Asa. That's the character. He was so full of himself, so arrogant that um, even he saw that the end of the road, Yaakov was the winner. He didn't let him. He is still afraid of Yaakov. He went to Har Seir. That's again to show the trait um, of uh, the difference between it Parut and Gava, and show the trait of difference between Asa and Yaakov. So, since we talk about the negative part of Gava, of being arrogant, my yad liyad lo inake, what does that mean when the Pasuk said, hand to hand, he will not be spread? So, the idea, Amarav kol abal eshetish, if someone cohabited with married women, afilu iknau la kedush boruch shemayim varas kabrom avinu, dechtiv be yarimot yadi el Hashem kel yom kone shemayim varas, lo inake mina shul gilom. Again, they said that they will not spread from gainom. Kasher ul dvei rabi sheila, יד לאה לא נקה ידי מבעלי, אלא אמרי דבר רבי שאלה, אפילו קיבל תורה כמו שרבינו, תכתיב במינו יש דעת למו, it's like, again, anthropomorphic way that משה רבינו received from השם, לא ינקה מנה של גיהינום מסתיר, if you married woman, a relation, you not get uh, uh, away, um, even מנה של גיהינום. קל של רבי יוחנן, היי ליד ליד יד מי אבי בא אלה, אמר רבי יוחנן, just one line in page five, two lines. page five, אפילו עושה צדקה בסתר, דכתיב מתן בסתר פי אף, לא יודע כן מגיע שינום, even in give צדק על סתר, which is a very high level of spirituality, he still will not be spread from דין גיהינום. so, we see the value, one of the things we learned today is the value of um, being humble. my teacher, the late Reb Shlomo Zalman Orbach, speak about his teacher, Isser Zalman Meltzer, Zachar Tzadik Libracha. So he said that he was like born with being humble. So one of the stories is, was a big, big um, um, wedding, one of those big, big weddings in Israel, and they, it was a huge bima. And they come after him and said that he should go up and sit there. And he opposed it. So they said to him, look, it's not you, it's the yeshiva. Yeshiva, it's Chaim, that he was in charge. He says that this big donor, um, you know, maybe will not give if you not sit there. So then when he came up on a bima on stage, he said, where should I sit? The best place I should sit because I'm not individual. I'm representing the, the yeshiva, the Torah. 
So again, it's all of those examples of the difference between being humble versus being arrogant and how far a person can go with this scene of arrogance.